morning all. Um, so it's Friday the 12th of October, it's 11.26, it's cold, it's wet and it's windy. You could probably hear it if I haven't downtoned it down. Um, yeah, it's a little wet and windy out there. My bamboo is so overgrown, it's ridiculous, um, that it's just gone and gone. <laughs> so it looks like I've got a giant bamboo bush when we actually only have like this small section of it. But looks pretty to me. Pretty sure my neighbours won't agree, but never mind. <laughs> well, um, I'm feeling a sense of accomplishment along with complete nausea and the shakes. <laughs> uh, I had a voice message left from the doctor because, well, the doctor's receptionist. Uh, because I didn't answer the phone because I didn't know who it was. Um, but they left a voice message and saying I had to ring them back. So I rung them back. Which I know sounds really easy. But it's really not for me. I haven't phoned anyone that wasn't my family members back. In years. Because being on the phone to people scares the life out of me. It makes me panic, um, it makes me feel sick, I'm still feeling a little nauseous, um, it gives me the shakes, my voice gets wobbly and it, it, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> it's, it's genuinely terrifying to me to phone someone but I'm trying to take steps, even small steps, to dealing with my anxiety and one of them is to increase the amount of people I feel safe phoning. And I should be able to safely phone my doctors, it's a safe area. So I tried, and I did. I rung them back and I spoke to someone on the phone. It was a really quick call, thank talk, because <laughs> I was giving a little... <laughs> but I did it. And I feel so proud of myself for doing it. And I don't care some people think that's a silly thing to feel proud about, because I'm proud of it, and I damn well should be proud of it. The only bad news is my blood test results are back, and the doctor wants to see me. And they only see you when there's something wrong. And they'd like to see me next week. One, Duncan's in Germany Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. <laughs> Diana, my mother-in-law, is having an operation today. Which means there's no way for me to get to the doctors. That in itself is a problem. And the fact that you have to ring at 8 o'clock in the morning in order to get an appointment. I don't speak to anyone at 8 o'clock in the morning. Duncan only gets grunts from me. It's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't do eight o'clock in the morning. Um so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. I might have to get Duncan to ring eight o'clock Monday morning to see if he can get me an appointment for Thursday or Friday. If he's allowed to work from home those days as he's out of the office Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday for business. He goes on his flight Monday at some point. He has gave me the times, I don't remember. So he's got to go up to the office, take all his stuff with him, and then he'll go from the office to the airport, fly to Germany, stay in Germany, and come back on Wednesday night, I believe. So he's not going to be here until late Wednesday. Um, and by that point, it would be too late to ring the doctor to get an appointment for the day. It's, it's just not going to happen. Um, unless he can ring up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, which he's not going to be happy with, and try to get me an appointment there and then. Because um, they always keep some appointments open for the day. So it might be that you can have to ring up Thursday or Friday morning and get me an appointment. Because um, I'd rather know what the problem is. Um, I mean, she tested for so many things. I'm actually surprised they got the results already. But we'll have to wait and see, see what they say. Um, I haven't even handed in the um, depression survey form as I'm calling it. Um, I forgot to take it with me yesterday so I'm going to have to make sure I get that handed in. Um, I'll just post it through the letterbox this weekend. Uh, it's got my details on it so they know who it is and what it's for. But um, yeah, I, I'm feeling rather, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still a little nauseous. Um, but in putting the memory card back into this was kind of Go in the hole, go in the hole. But you know, I'm slowly calming, I'm in my calm place. <laughs> um, and actually, wind and rain calms me as well, so that's quite nice. Um, so I'm slowly feeling better, but I'm, pro I'm so proud of myself. Um, and nobody can take that away from me. <laughs>
So today I'm probably going to have to refilm this headband tutorial. Um, it happens once in a blue moon, but I don't know why it happens. The, um, the editing software has a problem with a certain clip. Um, they even give the clip number so you can clip it out if you want to. Um, but I tried um, exporting it twice. The second one worked, but it didn't work correctly. There's just a few issues with it. Um, so I think I'm just going to refilm the whole thing um, and then hope that that one's okay. It could be it just had a funny five minutes on the camera um, during one of the switchovers. Um, let's see if I can show you this wind. That's my bamboo there. Yeah, that's all my bamboo you can see blowing around there. The bit at the very front, um, where's my finger? This bit at the very front is my rose bush, well, one of my rose bushes, but everything behind is my bamboo. Um, and I don't know if you can see on camera, there's a lot of it. It's actually fallen down. Can you see around there? It's all fallen down. But, shall I give you a tour of my incredibly messy garden? I'm not going outside, don't get me wrong, I'm not stupid. <laughs> But, shall we see if I can ooh, move things out of the way and move closer? Because my bathroom's messy too. So, here we got my rose bushes and behind we've got the bamboo. And behind that is a big tree that's actually behind my fence but it leans over. And there's actually another bush right in the corner there, which I've got no idea what it is. Um, more rose bushes there. And we actually have more plants of unknown region growing out there. But we also have a new hazel tree growing there and then a whole bunch more hazel trees growing in there and a dead rose bush <laughs> um, and then some more unknown plants there's the mess told you it was messy and there's my hazel tree if you can see it in this reflective surface <laughs> um, but as you see my garden is severely overgrown and severe need of help but there's only so much I can do, um, which is basically nothing for me. Uh, yeah, it, it, it really needs growing. It's an old dining room chair we were using to sit out in the summer and forgot to bring him. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a mess. But there's not much I can do about it. I can't do the gardening. Duncan doesn't have time to do it all. So, you know, let's... Turn this back around and put your back on the tripod so you can at least be stable. And bring your back to sit down. You're going to be all wobbly for a second, I apologise. I have to lift you. Ooh, too close. I have to lift you over. The um, amount of bags and things on my floor, my craft room is a little out of control right now. Because I've been slowly moving things down and trying to place them but I'm starting to run out of space for all the working tools of my craft because <sighs> I'd like upstairs to become just stock so actual stuff I'm selling and down here to be my crafting supplies um, but there's not quite enough room to get it all out at the moment so I'm working on reorganizing the storage um, some stuff will change over time um, I could do with some more shelves in this unit but we've actually nicked the shelves from this unit onto my DVD shelf so that we can have extra shelving on the DVD shelf um, so oh well but yeah that's my messy but rather glorious me overgrown garden I like overgrown um, you're out in nature and wild when no one's trimming it back it's lovely but as you probably noticed we live in a tiny little garden and this pretty much controls the entire garden <coughs> And we will get in trouble by the landlady who is coming to do a property check on the 21st of this month. So I have until then to get this place tip top. And there's not much to do inside the house, a couple of bits here and there. Um, but outside, as you can see, there's a lot to do in the garden that I don't know what we're going to do. If we can do a dump run, get rid of the old tractor, it's too small for Mally now. Um, and a couple of other items that are out there. Hopefully, if we can have some dry weather, we can cut the grass down this weekend. But I'm um, looking at today's weather, I'm not so sure. 
but it's bad to cut glass when it's wet. Um, so I don't know what we're gonna do. But we'll sort something out. So yeah, craft wise today, um, I am most likely going to refilm doing this. But as I don't want a gazillion of them lying around, I'm just gonna take apart the one I filmed and start from fresh with that one. Because I haven't woven the ends. Um then I will hopefully get either the Messy Fun hat or the this one will also film today. Um, and get some more work done on my jumper if I'm lucky. It's depending, I'm limited to what I can film, hours I can film. Um, you seem really high all of a sudden. Did I put you in wrong? Should we take you down a little? There we go, that's a little better. How did I not notice that before? Um, yeah, so with the boiler issues we've been having, I think I said, the boiler just shuts itself off for no apparent reason. In my bath, I have to get the boys to turn the boiler on several times so I can actually get hot water from my bath because it just shuts itself off. The issue was fixed some months ago. Um, it really wasn't. All he did was turn the internal thermometer thing down. I don't know what it's called, but it's the thing that says how hot the water gets. He turned it down so it wouldn't trigger the boiler to turn off. The problem is he turned it down to a point you had no hot water. You had lukewarm water, but you didn't have hot water, which was useless. What's the point of having a boiler? It doesn't give you hot water. Turning it down so it doesn't give you hot water so it doesn't trigger the problem. It's not a good fix. It's a cop-out fix. And so we turned it back up because we needed hot water. You can't have lukewarm baths. And I'm not saying it was my lukewarm because I have, well, according to my family, I have um, bath temperature of volcanoes. It was lukewarm to those who, far as I'm concerned, have bath temperature of the icebergs. <laughs> um, it was it was lukewarm to them. It wasn't even hot to them. That tells you how cold it really was. Um, so we had to turn it back up. Um, and of course, naturally, that's reset the triggering. And um, what it does is it literally shuts off and we have to reset the boiler from the bottom um, every hour or so. Which is no good, we're going into winter, we need the boiler working. So hopefully they're going to fix it properly. The fact is we need a new boiler. This boiler has been here since before we moved in. We've been here nine years. Nine years? Yeah, coming up to ten years we've been here. Uh, it'll be ten years in June. Um, so not like close, but you know, <laughs> definitely for nine years. Uh, and it wasn't new when we moved in, and I believe it wasn't new when the previous tenants moved in. I think I remember them saying that they've never changed the boiler since they bought this house, which they bought back in, I think, 2005, 2006 maybe? And they didn't change it, which means it was in before then, which means it might even be the original boiler when these houses were built. It's really old. Um, so these, the boiler could be about 20 years old. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yeah, I'm hoping they will finally just change the bloody thing. We pay enough rent here for them to be fixing these things because we don't have them doing anything else. They don't redecorate and we can't because we're not allowed. They, they gave us one tin of paint to do touch-ups in the nine years we've been here. Um, they've replaced the carpet on the stairs once. Um, and that was only last year, year before, and that was from before they bought the place, so that was an old carpet. Um, that's it, they haven't even fixed the flooring in the boys' bathroom, the main bathroom, um, because whoever decorated this place beforehand, before they bought it, um, they put the same floor that's down in our kitchen up in our bathroom, and it's not bathroom flooring, it's, they've done lino with the wood, so moisture has got into the edgings and things and the wood's expanded and broken and crept apart. Um, it's not dangerous or anything, it's just not cosmetically pretty. Um, so they promised to fix that, they still haven't, they promised to do that when they said they'd do the carpet. Uh, the mould we are slowly dealing with, we've bought some 
this mold paint stuff so you wash the mold away and then you spray this well I'm not spray paint this overcoat stuff on you wash it away with one set of this it's a kind of, I'm doing this so well aren't I <laughs> you have a spray and a paint that go together so you spray and wash away then you paint over with this thing it's all mold repellent stuff and then you paint your normal paint on top we've done half the ceiling but it's very strong smelling stuff so we can only do small amounts at a time so the re remaining half of the bathroom is still slowly being worked on. Um, but we've had to do that. She wouldn't even fix the mould issue. Um, we've got to start on our bathroom after that, our shower room. Um, that's the ensuite to our bedroom. Um, because that the cupboard in there is covered in mould and so we need to work that out too. Um, she did get an extractor fan finally put into the bathroom because there wasn't one, which is why we had a mould issue. Um, but the extractor fan doesn't do a good enough job for those of us who have very long baths. He put a silent one in, which meant it doesn't work very well. <laughs> um, though it works wonders for my migraines. Um, he was trying to make sure because Mally's bedroom is the first thing attached to the bathroom, he didn't want to wake him at night if we want to go up to go to the toilet, bless him. So he put a small one in, uh, quiet one, silent one in. It's not really silent, but it's very quiet. Um, so he was thinking of trying to be helpful of not waking the child um, but it's just not strong enough really but anyway yeah that's all they've done in all the years we've been here and let me tell you the rent here isn't cheap um, it's not gone up much over the years they've kept it down but it's still not cheap we wouldn't be able to get this place if we first moved in for the price we're paying so you know I'm grateful that it's the price that it is but for the same money we're here, if you move to a slightly less well cared for place, we could probably get a five or six bedroom. Um, so if you're in London, we could probably afford a bottle of one bedroom. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's not super expensive here, but it's not cheap. Um, basically, we're paying just under a thousand pound a month for this place. It's a lot of money. That does include the council tax. If you include the council tax, it's well over a thousand pound a month. Um, and that's before we paid any bills. <laughs> so you know they make some money off of us, but they're not spending it on keeping this house fixed and tidy. They do the bare minimum that's legally required, basically. And. There's not much we can do about it. They're meeting the legal requirements, and that's all they have to do. But you know, it wouldn't hurt them to fix things a little better. But oh well, like 18 minutes and ranting on. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated that we pay so much money for a nice house, and there's some parts which just really aren't suitable. Um. I would kick up more of a fuss if we still have babies, but as we don't have babies, it's not being detrimental to their health in any way. Um, because Kurt, the one with asthma, along with me, he's in one of the really nice warm rooms, so it's not harming him in any way. Um, <sighs> yeah, with me and Mally, uh, me and Mally, me and Duncan are in the coldest room because it's above the garage because that's the extension they built um it's so cold I have no idea <laughs> I don't know why I whispered that but but you know the house is nice it's just not big enough because I like a lot of stuff <laughs> um and I miss having a good garden we used to have big gardens I grew up with a big garden Duncan's parents have a lovely big garden they waste that space they have nice, it's a nicely manicured, perfectly wonderful lawn and flowers and at one point a veg patch, but they're not up to doing that nowadays. Um, yeah, it's a nice garden, but I think so many more things I do in it. <laughs> like a secret little place for me to just go and commune with nature, draw and paint and meditate. That's what I really want. I want a secret little place. I had one in one of my other places. Um, one of my other houses I had a swinging chair in it and everything, it was mine. I just 
black smooth nude where you can't do that here because you're so overlooked by everyone you can't do anything that's remotely um peaceful um as someone pointed out <laughs> you're overlooked while you're in this room because you see a wall here that's the only wall everything else is glass um because even the doors into the um study area um or our dining room <laughs> glass doors the glass pane doors um, I think you've probably seen them in the background over the years yeah so everything else here is glass give you a full turn around shall we are you dizzy yet let's see so it's extremely overlooked here once I get crafting or filming I don't really notice anyone but I couldn't There's some things I used to do that I can't do when you're overlooked um, for my pagan side of me. Um, not that I, you know, dance around and fire naked or anything, God no. <laughs> I don't want to give anyone a heart attack, I'd just scare all the birds away. Um, but you know, there's some things that you just, you need peace, quiet, no distractions. I mean, I haven't done my tower cards and my crystals and things for too long. I pick them up once in a while, but not properly. But I will one day. In fact, I say I will one day. I will by the end of this year because I'm starting a new channel, <laughs> which will be sharing crystals and tarot cards and runes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so once that's going, I will share it here. And those who like that sort of thing can go over to that one um, and subscribe. <laughs> I won't keep that stuff on here because I know there's some people that might not approve of that sort of stuff. Um, as so many people I know who have um, who don't approve of that sort of thing and tell me I'm worshipping the devil. I don't believe in the devil, which I know is really bad for those of you who do. But it's just not my belief. And I know some of you, you won't care that we are all welcome to our own beliefs. Um, but I know there's a couple of people who watch who might be concerned about that. Um, not none of my regulars, at least I don't think any of my regulars would. But if statistics hold up from my real outdoor life before I lost all my friends to the statistics of the amount of people I know now, there's going to be at least a couple who will have issues. And I don't want to scare them away from my crafty stuff by putting my witchy stuff on it so that will be different I'm still rambling for 23 minutes I may end up cutting all this out I don't know I'm gonna go um, check the weather report and see if this wind and rain is gonna die down so that I can actually do some filming I don't know but as it's now 11.49 I better get some food before they come and attempt to do anything with this boiler so I will catch you all later I hope you have a fantastic day and you'll take care Bye. Hi guys, it's now 1.13. Um, I might have to go quickly if the boiler people turn up. They could turn up at mo any moment. Um, I have a dilemma. The nice side of me says reject, um, recall my refund request. The mean side of me says they were ourselves to keep it. Um, I will show you. Here is supposedly, I'm still working my way through it, 447 embroidery threads. Um, yeah, I'm still working through it to see if there is all of them there. I'm currently winding them up onto these and putting them in the correct places. Um, the dilemma is, I ordered these to be delivered for the 3rd of October. I wanted the 1st, but the earliest I could get was the 3rd, so I ordered them for them. It is now the 12th of October and they finally arrived. I put in a refund claim two days ago, because I gave them plenty of time to get here, so I put a refund claim in two days ago. That parcel that these come in is 48 hour delivery, 
which means they waited until I put my refund claim in before they sent out my parcel, which they marked on my Amazon is dispatched on the 3rd, which is why I gave them time to arrive. So one, clearly, they were not dispatched when they said to us, but what annoys me more is I messaged them and asked them if they could just let me know the proper tracking number, because the one they gave me was fake, and when it was likely to arrive, so that I knew to be in for the parcel. Zilch, Zada, nothing. Not a single reply. I got nothing about them. They took my 30 odd pound, kept it, and didn't even respond with a, we're sorry, you've got missed in the parcel batch and we're going to get it out, or there was a delay for whatever. Nothing. If they said that, great, would have been fine. I would have waited. I think waiting for nine days for my parcel that didn't arrive with zero information on why it didn't arrive and the fact that they used a fake tracking number said it was coming from China after I paid for my product and then it's come from Sully Hull in England um, I'm pissed do I now reject, um, not reject, rec recall my refund request for my 30 odd pound or do I leave it and take my money back because they've been assholes the nice side of me says I finally got my product if late with zero communication and lies got everywhere I should still give them the money back because they've lost money sending it to me the mean side of me says they were assholes they ignored me they took my money and they only sent me my product when I demanded a refund for my money I agree with the mean side. <laughs> yeah, he agrees with the mean side. Um, I honestly don't know what to do. I will feel bad if I don't recall my refund. But then I'm also extremely pissed that they lied. They clearly were never going to send this out if I didn't put my refund claim in. Because it, it's to the day I put the refund claim in, it got posted. You can see on the label. So they weren't going to send it out. If they were going to send it out late, they could have emailed me and responded saying, we're really sorry, this got missed, we're going to get it out, or anything along those lines. But they point blank ignored me. They never responded to any of my messages. And that's pissed me off. And I'm sorry about the language, but I'm pissed off. Um, because clearly they planned on ripping me off. So I want to keep the money. I want my refund. Whether I'll get my refund is a different matter because now it's been posted and delivered. Um, but it wasn't like the parcel got lost and they were late or they missed the parcel or there was some kind of emergency they couldn't think. None of that because I've had no thing. They just weren't going to send my parcel out and hope that I'd never claimed a refund. Because I know some people order so many things they don't notice when something doesn't arrive so people get away with it. I'm not that person. I monitor all of my parcels to make sure they arrive. No matter how much I order. I keep an exact list of everything, every penny I spend, what it went on and what should arrive. If it doesn't arrive I chase it up. <sighs> so now, I don't know. I'm not going to put the refund request recall in today. I'm going to leave it for at least a day, sit on it, see how I feel and maybe cancel the request for the refund or maybe keep it going because they haven't explained a single thing of why they're doing and they're clearly a bunch of con artists um, and con artists shouldn't prosper and I know some of you are probably thinking I'm a right bitch even considering taking my money back when I finally got my product but hopefully some of you will see the other side of it like I do that they screwed me over <laughs> they were clear as day and planning on screwing me over and not giving me my product and I still haven't checked whether they're all here so I don't know if they're all here yet I need to check um, but even if they are all here which I know in some other reviews I've seen recently some people didn't get all of it they just hid it um, so unless you actually sit down and go through all you're not going to notice the odd few missing though someone did have 200 colours missing they just doubled up colours so that nobody would notice and it says we want to each colour which is what I'm going to go through and check um, so until I've done that I don't even know if I've got what I paid for 
So I'm, I'm just going to sit here and go through, wind them up onto the little cards. There's not enough of these cards for everything, but there's some. I have more on the way. They just, they're not due to arrive until, I think, 26th of October. See, those ones, they gave me a long date, because I ordered them at the same time, but they told me they wouldn't be here to the end of October. So I'm not expecting them until the end, and I'm happy, more than happy, to wait for that, because I expect it, because they told me from the beginning of the day. These people gave me a two day delivery date. It's now nine days later and they finally arrived after ignoring all my messages and waiting for me to put a refund in. This, I also ordered on the same day, this arrived the next day. And that's where all of these little cards come from. They were in this. So this is where I will be storing them all. Now this only has um, 18 slots. I mean, one of them is a big one, but I'm counting it as two. Um, and there's probably 20 colour codes of things. I'm following the DMC colour charts. So, you know, they put them in codes, and there's 20 of them. And um, so I will have to hibbijiggy things around a little to get them all to fit. Um, but it's a good start. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what to do, to be honest. Because, yeah, the really nice side of me, the side that normally comes out, is say, I got my product, end of, they can keep the money. But I'm not so nice nowadays. Nowadays, if they intended to rip me off, I want to rip them off. And I know that's an eye for an eye, and that's really bad. And believe me, there was a time I would never have done that. I would fight my corner, but the second I got my product, then I'd be happy and it'd be done. But I'm not anymore. I'm a grumpy old cow, and I don't like being treated like a piece of crap. And clearly these people are probably treating other people like a piece of crap, because they're not going to treat just one person like it. Go by the reviews that are now coming out recently, they're doing it a lot. So I intend to make them at least sweat. Um, it may be that Ammon say, oh no, you finally got your product, you're not going to get a refund now. I don't know. I've never had to claim a refund on Amazon in my life. I've always had my products, even stuff that hasn't arrived. I've contacted the per person, they've apologised, told me what happened, and I've sent me my money back or sent me a new product. I've never had it so that somebody has just completely outright ignored me. So I don't know how this works. I don't know if they will hear my side of the story, hear their side of the story, and then make a decision like PayPal supposedly does, <laughs> um, or whether because they now have proof they posted it, even if it was incredibly late and after my refund request, that maybe they'll be allowed to keep the money? I don't know, I don't know how it works. But at least they're going to have to explain themselves now, um, and maybe they might not be so quick to rip the next person off. That was a nine minute rant on me being annoyed. That's depressing. <laughs> I'm going to go, get back to wrapping all these up and sorting them out and ticking them off and make sure I've got everyone I should have. So, I will catch you all later. You all take care. Bye!
go any lower. There we go. Hey guys, so I'm still sorting through these. Um, hopefully, if I put the footage in correctly, you would have seen a sped up version of me doing some. But I've only got that much done. I still have a very large amount to go, but my battery's about to go, so I'm going to have to shut off that and charge it. So I'll just keep doing this um, off camera and maybe show you it finished later or the way this is going tomorrow, in a week, in a month, in a year. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying it, um, but so far I found one that's not in this record. Um, the record I got does say that it doesn't include 27 new colours added in 2002. So this is an old record, but it's the first one I found. So I'm guessing this is one of the new colours that was added. So I'm just going to put them to the side. Um, and hopefully get it added at the end, if I work out where which column they belong in. Uh, Number-wise, I think I know which column it might go in. It's so either going to go in 14 or 15 because this is 3771, 3770 goes in 14 and 3772 goes in 15. So I'm guessing this goes in between those two. But which one I don't know. Um, I'd probably put it in 15 because looking at this chart, um, 15 has space. Um, so we'll see. But I'm slowly taking them off. I've got hundreds and hundreds to go because there should be 447 and I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, and then the boiler guys have been. <sighs> They've said what needs fixing. They have to get approval um, to see if the landlady will pay for it um, before they can fix it. But the thing is, as I'm like 99% sure, it's the same problem that they supposedly fixed the last time round. So if they fixed it the last time round, why does it need fixing again? In like a year's time? Possibly less. I can't remember when we had them come out. Um, and they say there's a leak in the air, a leak in the air and cupboard um, on one of the pipes. Which again, I'm sure they supposedly fixed last time. So... But yeah, we have to wait and see if the landlady will fund the fixing. Um, and then get the go ahead. And then they can come back and fix it. Until then, we have to live with our boiler overheating. Um, and letting it cool down before we can switch it back on again because that's what it's doing. It's the thermostat inside the boiler or something is broken and where water would normally get up to a temperature and then it would turn off and then it would be cold water go through until you need it to go hot again. It doesn't turn off, it's always hot which is overheating the boiler which is why it's turning off. Um, but I'm sure that's the same thing they said last time and that they fixed it. Clearly they didn't, so I don't know. But I'm going to go because this battery is going to go on me in a minute. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed watching the incredibly tedious task of me sorting out embroidery threads, which I will continue to do all day, which might mean that I get the headband to talk about tomorrow. We'll see. I might try to clear this table off once the battery's charged and record it anyway. I don't know if you can tell, but if I turn you around, you might be able to see. It is now getting very windy out. It's been worse than this when I was filming, so I'm hoping it didn't. Um, well, I'll have the sound off so you won't notice anyway, but yeah, it's getting pretty windy out there. Um, I don't know what's the speed for today. It's calmed down a bit now. It always calms down a bit when I turn it around. But, um, yeah, I do like the wind. I just, it makes me worried when I'm this close to a very big tree, you know? I mean, that's the branches of it there. Um, 
so it definitely could fall down onto my conservatory here and crush me to death because let's face it I'm not a very fast runner so I won't get out in time <laughs> but it, it's pretty firmly rooted I've never seen it budge so I'm sure it'll be fine but. Sorry, I'll put the flip screen up so I can see you. <laughs> but yeah, so it's getting it's been quite nice watching everything wave around. It gives me something to do and listen to YouTube while I'm at it. But yeah, I'm just gonna continue listening to YouTube, trying to catch up on everyone I'm behind. Get some lunch because I'm hungry. It's now quarter to three. Um I haven't had lunch yet because I forgot. So I'm gonna get some food. Cause they hungry, hungry, hungry. So I will catch you all later before this battery goes ha! <laughs> so bye bye. Hi all, it's getting dark in here now so I've got the light on hence the glare because it's on just over there. <laughs> um, but the main light isn't on because when I started filming I didn't need it. Um, I've just refilmed the headband. Um, but I've done it in sample size for quickness because I was fighting the light so I hope that's okay. Um, there's no difference between the size I did there and the size I did here. Um, it's purely a stitch count difference. Um, and I'm, in my case I also did slightly less rows on the sample. Um, but I will have the proper numbers wrote up in the pattern and I have said in the video how many you should be doing compared to what I'm doing. So hopefully everyone will like it. So I'm going to edit that quickly and hopefully get that uploading. Um, and then I'm going to go for a bath. Because... I want one, plain and simple. <laughs> so I will see you all later. You all take care. And I hope you're all having a fabulous day or evening. Um, I'm also going to end this one here. Um, because I won't be doing much else after I get out of the bath. <laughs> so I will see you all tomorrow. So you all take care. Bye.